Could you please talk a little bit about the hypocrisy of Scientology and their take on human rights, especially in light of the Khashoggi murder? A recent conversation with my Scientologist relative made it clear to me that there was no care whether Khashoggi, a journalist for the Washington Post, was slain and dismembered after walking into the Saudi consulate in Turkey a few weeks ago. The basic nonchalant reaction to my bringing up the topic seemed to be that it was basically Khashoggi's own fault for having put himself in that situation, both from having been an outspoken critic of his government and having been naive enough to walk into the consulate in the first place. This seems like a slippery slope to me in light of the current administration's hostility towards the press. I realize Scientologists don't hold journalists in high esteem and think news is n theta to be avoided. Is this not hypocrisy when they in the same breath claim to hold human rights near and dear to their hearts with Scientology front groups like the Citizens Commission for Human Rights and their Youth for Human Rights initiative at the United Nations? How do Scientologists even sleep at night? Where do they get their news if they don't value journalists' lives? Do they just chalk it up to, gotta clear the planet of insanity, that's the one way forward? Is there no outrage? Okay, well, you opened up a really big topic here, Monica, and um, I don't know, you know how much detail I really want to get into this now because this is actually going to be part of my work when I get my, my first next book done on the RPF. Um, that's going to be tied very much into this question of human rights, because Scientology is grossly hypocritical about their stance on human rights, while within, you know, they praise and seek to get other people to believe that human rights are very important. They propagate and, and disseminate the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. They teach, they put together actually really good educational materials for children about human rights. It's, it's actually like, it's hard for me to even want to admit that, and yet that is the truth. Some of the materials Scientology put together to teach kids about the points of the Declaration of Human Rights are brilliant. They're really good. And they also put together some really good little PSAs, some public service announcements and little clips and little video clips about teaching about all of those points of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So I have to honestly give them kudos for that work. Now, I have to also cut them off at the knees because they are the biggest hypocrites on the planet for promoting human rights over here and then having an RPF, a Sea Org, the operation of the Sea Org, the way that that operation works, it violates people's human rights one, up one side and down the other. They practically violate every single one of the points of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights just by running the Sea Org the way that they do. So it's, you know, so yes, it is definitely a hypocritical operation. Now, in terms of what you're talking about with the regular Joe Schmo Scientologist and their take on this sort of thing, what you're actually getting into there is the hypocrisy, at least as far as I can see, comes from the more fundamental principle in Scientology that an individual is always responsible for his own condition. This is really big in Scientology, this point of what is responsibility as a definition. Hubbard defines responsibility as um, sort of like knowing causative action that an individual is taking uh, in order to, you know, to uh, knowing and willing cause over a, a thing whether that's a car or a house or your life or whatever it is, if you're being responsible, then you are being, um, you know, at cause, you are causing things to occur with that thing. And you know you are doing that and you're unapologetic about it. And that's kind of Hubbard's take or slant on what responsibility is. Uh, it's kind of, a, you know, he's, he, he kind of writes about it in a number of different ways, but that's pretty much what it comes down to. So if a person is supposed to be in Scientology, if a person's supposed to be responsible for their own condition, then that means if they walk into, you know, like Khashoggi walks into a consulate and is murdered, well, that was, you know, that's, that's, it's not like the murderers aren't at fault for what they did, but it's pretty much on him that he walked in there and put himself in that position in the first place. And the uh, ultimate um, interpretation of Hubbard's works on this are that, you know, whatever happens to you is on you, right? And if you can't deal with that, then you got to look even earlier to see 
how you made things happen in such a way that that was the outcome. And that's your life and that's what you have to deal with, right? And in some ways, this makes sense or this is a, a sensible way of approaching things. You know, you don't want to go too far in terms of, I don't know, being victimized. Uh, where, you know, you're only a victim and, and everything that the world does to you is all, you know, somebody else's causation and, and you're not the causative agent of anything that ever happens to you. I mean, you can go that extreme. And so this responsibility thing sort of pulls you back out of that kind of thinking. But, to, but it then, like I've made the point before with Scientology, it, t it takes every useful, constructive principle that it, that's within the world of Scientology and it dials it up to 11. It just over-exaggerates and it makes it, you know, blows it all out of proportion. And that's what Scientology, that's what L. Ron Hubbard has done with the concept of responsibility. So Scientologists sleep at night because they feel that this bedrock principle of responsibility is very, very important. And um, they don't think about you know, they don't, these are not people who really think in complicated ways, okay, Scientologists. It's sort of a culty thing that your cult members don't think in complex thoughts. Uh, I made this point with the flat earthers and it really drove it home to me in seeing them and then comparing that way of thinking and behaving to the way Scientologists think and behave. And I went, oh yeah, I kind of get this. Things are simple. Things are really simple. The world outlook is very black and white. We talk about black and white thinking being a characteristic of, of cultish um, mentality. Well, this is, this is how it manifests itself is, well, it was, his, it was his damn fault. You know, he shouldn't have been there in the first place or he shouldn't have done that. Oh, well, you know, and they don't think at the same time, well, wait a minute, we've got this universal declaration of human rights over here that we're pushing. And it says that you have a right to live. You know, you got a right to have a life and not be murdered. And and then there's this way to happiness that L. Ron Hubbard wrote, and it says, don't murder people. Huh, I don't know. Boy, now you're getting me thinking, oh, boy, I don't know about this. It, you know, it's like it's a little too complicated for them. So, <laughs> um, so anyway, that's kind of, you know, in a, in a short take here in this format of show, that's kind of what I can say about that, that I think will sort of make some of this make some degree of sense. There's a lot more that could be said about this and a ton more to be said about the hypocrisy of Scientology in regards to human rights. So don't worry, I've, I have been thinking about that quite a bit and I plan on writing a whole book about it. So that's on the horizon and uh, for now that's my answer to this question.